It's your buddy Mikey with We Talking Media. Now it's story time. Story time of the week. One interesting tall tale. You know I love sports. You know I keep saying it. I hate to say it. I love them. I love them all. Alright? Even though I'm not a proponent for people continuously asking folks, do you play sports? Because I, I hate kids to be one-minded and only have one path because you see what it gets you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sports induces discipline, work ethic, coaching, allows you to work for somebody in peace and understand that they're trying to help you in the end because they're all trying to win. Yes, even if they're talking down to you, they're trying to win because you reflect upon a paycheck that they earn. So they don't want you not to succeed. People don't hire people for no reason. Understand? They don't want to just boss you around. They want you to be a contributor. In the NBA, the biggest contribution of a player is learning the playbook, understanding the playbook, getting there in the first place as a superior mind or athlete. Yes, I said mind first. NBA can be had without athleticism. You can be very, very smart and make it to the NBA. One of the few sports you can do that. Actually, when I started to say football, you couldn't do that. But even football, if you're real smart, know how to look at the routes and, 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 and know how to run between the lines, you, you can be just as good as a guy running a 4-2. Okay, Chris Carter is an example of that. Chris Carter looking up wide receiver. All right, he wasn't fast, wasn't, but had great hands and knew where to be. But you do, you do all that, and I'm saying, saying all that to say this: when we look at these NBA players, I, I, I know, I hate to say, I've been blessed with living in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Yes, Eastwick, and you know us, you know that city, you know that surrounding area is filled with professional athletes, filled with it. Doesn't look like it, but that area is filled. And yes, if you were born anyway, anywhere between 2001 and now, you know one, right? Or two, or three. Pick a sport, basketball, NBA, uh, NFL, Jersey guys in that area, you're going to find a couple hits. But one lesson that I've seen... Depending on where you're from, and I don't want to go there too deep and make fun of everybody from other other zip codes. My apologies for the nose. I got some I got some steaks running in the background. Just because I, I have pleasure doing these videos. Now, if you understand the background of, of some of these kids, right, the urban environment, but certain cities, especially specifically when we go down south, it's a little bit different mantra. Okay, what do I mean by that? All right. Some of these folks are not really trained on how to handle money. They're so into the sports that they lose one of the main things. Yes, you got to get the bag first. God bless them. I wish I was in their shoes. Do not lie to yourself if you don't think you want some of these contracts that you're seeing. Look at Mbappe and soccer. Was it 900 million, something like that? Whoo! Almost a billionaire off of playing soccer. But ain't on top of the getting there and making the money it's keeping the money lord have mercy on me and these are the stories of some of you know some of our favorites some of our favorites athletes that almost lost it all they put who lost it all 2021 story but it's a reminder and the nba has changed quite a bit and i'm glad the social media is there um but you gotta be you know you say how are you gonna feel sorry for guys making this much money well this is where you feel sorry for them because everybody's after you when you're winning. See? It's just like winning the lotto. I'll tell everyone that win the lotto, even if it's a family member that's known to me, even my mother. Keep your mouth shut, don't tell nobody. Keep your mouth shut, don't tell nobody. Because everybody's after you and you can lose it all. Let's run it through real quick. 24 NBA players. An old story, but a good lesson. You can't have all the athleticism and, and, and sports mind without having some financial mind. And I encourage every single young youth to please interject in some math and financial coursework as a mandatory in your upcoming and upbringing to success. Okay? We got to do that for the youth because we know we even me and even my fellas, right? We know of all the mistakes that we made when we were younger. Wasted, wasted, wasting money for no reason. Cars, clothes, and what you know, you know the rest, right? Let's just be honest. I call a spade a spade. I gotta be honest. I'm old. I'm trying to help people. 
wasting the money, man. Miami trips, forget about it. You're broke. I mean, sheesh. You, you're spending, you know, 15, 20, you know, three, four days. You're like, wow, what the hell happened? <laughs> I try to start. You know, you had 20, you 20 stacks down by the time you're coming back from Miami, you know? But what for? Let's just jump into this one, man. The Dream and Kenny Anderson way, way back. And hopefully kids, younger people that are looking at this or people that are under a certain age group, look up these players. They were some dogs, man. <laughs> Kenny Anderson was a dog. Going up in Queens, Kenny Anderson was a star in the court from... Early age. In 1994, Anderson, Sports Illustrated reporter, recruiter, went to watch him play when he was in sixth grade. So he was a prodigy, right? He earned over $63 million over, over 14 years. He owned 11 cars and spent large amounts of money on champagne, cigars, and partying. He's a Northeast guy, okay? Definitely. I lived a fast life and, and enjoyed every bit of it, okay? But with expenses for seven children, child support ate up another huge chunk of his budget. By 2005, he had to file for bankruptcy. Lord, have mercy on me. That's the first storyline. Why am I doing this? I believe all of these different storylines give you every single thing to watch out for as you run the lane of success. He did rebound in a second career as a basketball coach, and now he's the coach of Fisk University in, in, in Nashville, but a far cry from the $63 million dollars. I did make a video a couple of days ago, and I said five million put into bonds at a at a five percent rate nets you two hundred and fifty k a year. Please, at least do that for yourself. Chris Washburn, next door, big time star, big time athlete, six eleven. Drafted by Golden State in eighty six, only played seventy two games, and he went on to Europe. By the time he retired to Houston in the nineties, he'd run. And remember the eighties and nineties basketball players, football players. Drugs were rampant. The tests were not there. When I'm talking about drugs, I'm talking about hard nosed cocaine. We and marijuana was heavy. That was that was like that was like drinking a beer. So you gotta be advised at that time. But this is how we came out in the '90s. He'd run through 1.2 1.25 mils. He earned an NBA, and he was left homeless and eating out of trash cans or locked up in jail on drug charges. That is a bad story. That isn't the end. Okay, uh, he told the Brown Scoop in 2016 that he'd been clean for 14 years. All right, well, but lost all the money. 1.25 million, obviously, to, in today's day and age, you say that's nothing, but just think of 86. That was probably like 10, 12 million, you know, maybe a little higher. Next one down, Delonte West. We all know about him, at least in my age group. Played with LeBron, dog six man, dog of a six man. What a score. Had mental illness, okay? Since he was a child, was eventually diagnosed with bipolar. Uh, he frittered away away his $16 million fortune, eventually buying a $1 million eight-bedroom home. He couldn't afford to heat and proposed to his girlfriend with a ring fashioned out of string. Okay? And that's where the story ends. We see him in a lot of homeless videos. And you just got to ask yourself, who was really in position to help these young men and make the best decisions? I understand they're hard-headed I understand they're type A's, okay? Athletes are type A's, no doubt about it, all right? There's a cockiness to them. That's expected, okay? That's expected from a type A. That's how they got there. But somebody has to get in the way of them. And I do blame, from a root cause perspective, I do blame the NBA. There's more that the NBA can do to keep these guys out of broke. Rick Mahone, the next story, had a long and successful career in the NBA, he got a start with the Washington Bulls in 1980 as a second-round draft pick. While he was initially unhappy about his trade to Detroit, he ended up returning to the city after his retirement to coach the WNBA team, the Detroit Shock. All right, Despite that fact, he earned $7 million over his career and earned a six-figure salary working as a broadcaster. But after all that, Mahone and his wife reported they were earning a monthly income of $6,000 but had more than double that in expenses. Wow. Mahone now works as a broadcaster for the NBA with a reported net worth of $4 million mills. Wow. Ain't that crazy? He came back though, right? That's pretty good to, to, to have earned, what was it, $7 million and come back to be worth net $4 million. There's ups and downs. I mean, even if you're perfect, you're not perfect, right? Somebody's going to eat off of you and you're going to have some failure. So good, good, good job for Rick. But again, the circumstance was a business deal, right? All right. File for bankruptcy, or excuse me, excessive spending. This looks like an excessive spending. Spending within your means is the key point here, right? 
next the one behind that just so it can last some points for y'all so you understand what the point of the video is delante west this is just a men mentality thing right family needs to step in the guy before that this guy was a drug guy don't do drugs right you get a lot of storylines out of this right um put condoms on kenny anderson i mean <laughs> i mean seriously let's get a point out of each one of these so we make this meaningful and this goes for all salaries what not to do tim duncan this is a good one i respected him a lot i thought he was a sharp guy and he still is a sharp guy right one of the greatest power forwards of all time all right over his time in the league he earned a reputation being a hard worker and a leader on the, on and off the court all right um it was only when he was going through a divorce in 2013 that duncan noticed his financial advisor see when you leave money in other people's hands and you're not looking Notice his financial advisor had cost him more than 25 M's in a bad deal. The advisor had failed to disclose his own interest in the deal, and as such, Duncan sued him. In 2017, a fellow judge ordered the advisor to pay Duncan $7.5 million in restitution, and he was sentenced to four years in prison. Okay? Okay? Ain't that interesting? All right? Business deal gone bad. Those are the ones I'm scary about because you think something's good, but it could be bad. All right, let's go to the next one. Eric Strickland, $13 million over 10-year career, but one bad deal. Here he goes, another deal. Where's the real estate at when you need it? In 2001, a friend of a close friend told him about a real estate deal in Georgia. Of course, Strickland turned to his business man, his father, to help him look into it. Unfortunately, the elder Strickland was a retired lieutenant colonel, but the Air Force didn't look at the deal hard enough. The property wasn't worth nearly what the Stricklands had been told, and Eric ended up taking a huge hit. On top of that, the friend who put him on to the deal actually got... Cut out and led to the two falling out as well. Wow. One bad guy can really kill you, right? They always talk about these deals, but, you know, you got to be very careful and got to be knowledgeable. That's why financial literacy is important. Let's keep going down to the next one. Glenn Rice, big time shooter. This is scary for me. I, I You know, he looks sharp too, but I don't know his background. 15-year career, $60 million. Uh, I remember him with L.A., but he was a dog on the Charlotte Hornets. Again, sixty million earned in 2016 revealed his uh, his uh, financial status. All right, when another paternity suit was began, where comes Rice argued he was struggling to pay his fifteen hundred dollar monthly payments and petitioned the court and for law to lower than the six hundred. So he's paying fifteen hundred in child support. Says too much. Since retiring, it's he's found it hard to find work and mostly lives off selling signed memorabilia. Lord have mercy. Sixty million. All right. You do some taxes, take the fifty percent. Maybe that's thirty million. Gil Arenas, he's really have a has 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 become a new coming, of one of the best podcasters on YouTube. Go shout out to Gil. Go check out his channel, Gilbert Arenas. Well spoken, has some great topics, and is, and is definitely a tactician, a a, a, a literacy issue of the game. Reminds me of a Kobe type of brain and mindset. Uh, those are the guys that I'm most appreciate of, appreciate appreciate of from the athletic perspective because the, they have the business side. But he struggled here, right? He's always been funny. He earned 163 million over his career. That's a lot of money. But between Arenas' lavish lifestyle, which surprised me, he looked mellow and some alleged mismanagement of his money. I think that's where he lost it. His nuts were taking a serious tumble again. Bad people, bad hands. Hey, buddy, you play ball. Let me get an investment for you. You gotta really watch out. He once purchased a three and a half million dollar home, filled it with expensive accessories, and spent a hundred thousand on landscaping. From there, he then installed a shark tank, housed multiple live sharks. Just feeding the fish cost him five thousand a month, and their caretaker cost another fifteen hundred. Lord have mercy on me. Arenas claims it's not just his habits that have eaten to his fortune. All right. In 2015, he launched a suit against his former business management firm for $40 million. There goes the business management firm. There goes the big dollars. Listen, we all want to be We all want to be Jeff Bezos. We all want to be, uh, I think, I mean, at least my group of people, my circle. You know, we want to we taste that, you know, Steve Jobs. Everybody wants to take the take whatever they've earned from maybe an a entertainment perspective and go legit. I think Shaquille O'Neal is one of the be biggest or best interpretations of that. And some of the follow. But again, bad. It looks like bad business deals for Gil. All right. But now he's winning. Still worth 20 million. I, I think he'll climb back up, especially with his YouTube page. Larry Johnson didn't read down as far. Big time. Uh think about Zion Williamson without the uh without the without the hops. That was Larry. But he did have some hops. Picked uh first in the 91 draft. Okay, reportedly earned around 84 million over his decade-long career. Remember, this was way back. 
Johnson found himself struggling to keep up with child support payments by 2015 and filed for bankruptcy. This is an injustice. This is why there's this manosphere thing, okay? And I hate to complain about it, but one of his mothers moved to, one of the mothers moved to have his assets liquidated by the court to sell the 900,000 Johnson odor. Instead, Johnson proposed an unusual trade. He offered her his Orange County home, which was worth more than 800,000. He also agreed to pay her 1500 a month until the debt was settled. Lord have mercy. Child support. Choosing the right woman. Making sure that they're not in it just for your pockets. And for a lot of NBA guys, I hate to tell you, their head's so high to the sky, I don't think they can even fathom that a woman doesn't want them just for their looks, okay? But it's usually for the money. Randy Brown, Chicago Bulls. I remember him, okay? Uh, earned $15 million over his 12-year career, but between bad real estate and restaurant deals, he strong his fortune was forced to declare bankruptcy in 2008. So this was a bad business deal, bad timing, hit on a crash. One thing I've learned in business, in my life, and the mistakes I've made, it moves fast. It moves fast. You can't be long on it, all right? Business deals in this time and age is done fast. I don't know how long he was holding the real estate, uh, but again, he got caught in that crash in 2000. There, all right, it was a humming in 2009. He said the most humiliating aspect of the bankruptcy proceedings was when a judge ruled he had to auction off his rings from the Bulls three championships. He's since bounced back from that, having worked as an assistant coach with the Sacramento Kings player development. Okay, so again, I tippy toe into stuff, but looks like he had some bad deals. People saying he's gonna make money, he did not. Next one, Dan Isel, successful career, he played for them for nine years. His uh, coaching career was cut short when he was caught on camera responding to a fan who was heckling him with a racial slur. Uh, a series of bad deals, more than four and a half million in debt to at least 34 different credit creditors, including his own daughter and son-in-law. Issa was forced to file bankruptcy in 2009. Wow. He's since retired where he works as an executive director at Bel Air Presbyterian Church. Lord have mercy. Dan Eisel. Sorry, buddy. Bad business deals. Again. One rule in business that I've learned, another one, don't use your money. <laughs> now, that's a shame for me to say, because you're probably going to be like, okay, use other people's money and lose theirs. That ain't right. But that, that's the truth of the matter. The key thing is to leverage other folks' money and not yours uh, to win. I, I'm not part of that, privy to that, you know, distinction, but it's, it's true. That is the way a lot of folks win in the real estate game. Let's keep going on. Derek Coleman, hey, did it all, guys, did it all, did it all, LeBron without hops, huh, LeBron without hops, can I say that, can, can I, can I really say that, uh, I mean, I'm probably gonna get negative, but Derek Coleman was that big, that big, that good, all right, Let's keep going in, he spent his money, efforts trying to help the struggling city, investing in a development called Coleman's Corner, Bringing jobs and businesses opportunities in the city by investing in real estate. And here we go. Okay. Real estate is not full. It's not bulletproof. All right. But when the economy went south, Coleman couldn't afford to sustain his investments. Wow. Again, it looks like he got caught in the 2008 9 crash. He filed for bankruptcy in 2010, saying he owed creditors $4.7 million. Though he had earned more than $91 million over his 15-year career, he only listed $1 million in assets. Okay. That didn't put him off investing in Detroit, though. He stayed in the city and created a summer basketball program called D.C. Elite. All right. Oh, D.C., D.C. Again, when they see that NBA on you, you're, you're a red flag to be used. All right? And, and I've seen it with professional athletes that I know of in the NFL. I see people always trying to edge in and take advantage of these guys. So, again, what glitter is not always gold. And don't just give your money off to anybody. Only you care about your money. Somebody else is being using it. You're probably in trouble. I'm not going to lie to you. You got to watch them like a hawk. Next one down. Jason Caffey had a lot of promise as a basketball player. Early in his career, he played for the Chicago Bulls. Okay, I'm going to skip through. Let's see how much money he owed. He earned two championship rings and a tidy $34 million over his career. Caffey filed for bankruptcy in 2007. He stated that half of his monthly income now goes to child support. Oh, shit. This is another. Wear a condom. Ten kids. Child support payments. Ten kids. Work on them. All right? See, I say don't... I, I should, as, a, as getting more religious in my being, I should say you should have one wife and stick to it and have enough balls to say, 
especially after 25. Yes, I'm giving an age. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all my religious followers. I'm saying you should have all that out of your system by 25 and you should be with one woman. Okay. There's no need to jump around. There's no advantages of it. You tried it all. Same thing for a woman. You've tried it all. You can flirt around. I don't mind that. Uh, but the thing is, know your boundaries and know how to wear condoms. Lord have mercy. How do you lose your life paying child support? I'm going to continue on. Antoine Walker. Everybody knows the boy from Boston. The shimmy shake, 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 shake. Earned $108 million over his 13-year career playing in all these different cities. <sighs> but once he retired, he kept spending like he was earning millions of dollars a year. Within two years, he was he was $12.7 million in debt and only had $4.3 million of his fortune left. Fortunate to have you, girl. Lord, have mercy. And his girlfriend has been around. I mean, his girl is a Gav. Gav, Gav Matt, she's with Chad Ocosinco, I think. His uh, his his uh, his wife. So, <sighs> sad for Antoine, but he's he's come back. He was supporting thirty people. That is a red flag. Okay, and one of the key things that you want to do in life, if somebody's made it, you want to help help them make more. You don't want to take them take away and lean on them. All right, you don't want to take away and lean on them because when you go broke, no one's gonna freaking help you. All right, no one's gonna freaking help you, and that's a fact. All right, let's keep going. David Harrison was the first round draft pick in 2004. Not only was he a skillful player, but many of his coaches and teammates loved working with him. Okay, 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 Mr. David Harrison. Let's go. All right. So he got busy heavy. Okay. Harrison clearly had a bright future. Okay. He brought, and so it was a shock for him to see. Him go from playing in a McDonald's All-American game in 2001 to working at McDonald's. Oh, no. Lord have mercy. I remember him. He was a big... Uh, I remember Harrison. He was a big... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen him. He was a big center. Seven foot plus. I mean, he had a body of a chiseled Adonis. Okay. So he, 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 went, he went broke. Lord have mercy. What can I say? What more can I say? Let's keep going. I know a long video, but... Again, he retired from the NBA by age 25, having earned $4.4 million. By 2013, when his credit card was rejected at McDonald's, with his house in foreclosure and family to support, he ended up taking a job at McDonald's. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck. McDonald's All-American to McDonald's. McDonald's All-American game is one of the top basketball games for high schoolers. It switched over a lot over the years, but that was like the sumo cum laude of you have made it as an athlete was playing in that game. Boom. He comes a long way since, making money on the stock market and working as a basketball commentator. Okay, cool. Came back. Latrell Sprewell. This was infamous, man. One of the top defensive players ever, in my opinion. Him and Ron Artest. Okay, they'll go down to that Nick era. This is when I grew up. This is tough basketball. Not no step back that we're seeing now. This was tough. They was tough back then, man. You kids wouldn't have made it. I'm sorry. I know that all, all the old heads, blah, blah, blah. You wouldn't have made it in this, in this era. Hmm. Been scratches on your face. <laughs> you you would have seen a lot of Jordan Poole incidents with, with Draymond Green. That's where Draymond came from. No doubt about it, where he's at in Michigan. But Latrell choked the spree all out. You know, that's what I know. Can they, bro they brought that up right away. I knew that. Choked his choke coach one time. Okay. Uh, voided his contract. Spiro went to play for New York Knicks. All right, and the Timberwolves offered him a three-year extension after his first season with them, valued at twenty-one million. Spiro turned them down. Other teams down ended up retiring from the league. And although he earned ninety million over the course of his career, Spiro ended up defaulting on his home in two thousand eight and being sued by his girlfriend for two hundred million dollars. Okay, okay. Why I say get done with the games before twenty-five. Because there's a high probability, and now it's even younger. Now you can't even get away from it. That the girl that you that you were with before your first first year in college, when you're not a star yet, unless you came in as a star, will be more loyal to you than anyone after. And everybody after your college career 
you're pretty much in trouble. All right. So I hate to say it. The childhood sweetheart theory does work. That's the one that really works. If you get them anytime after that, after you've been successful, you get situations like this. All right. I know it's like a new, I know what you guys are saying. Needle in the haystack. It is. <sighs> Create a GoFundMe pay for his sick granddaughter's medical bills. Have, have mercy. All right. Clifford Robinson. 18 years in. 40 year old retiree. He played a long time. Earned 60 million. Oh my God. But within two years of retirement, his net worth had taken a serious time. He owes 12.4 million. With just seven point one million to his name, how? He filed for bankruptcy in two thousand nine. Was forced to auction off his fifty nine hundred foot home in Hillsborough, Oregon. After the bankruptcy, Robinson went on to live a story like he traveled to North Korea with Dennis Rodman and appeared on the show Survivor. What happened? What happened there? Oh my God! You have to be tight with your money, even. With that much money. You have to live like you live. I would say live middle class. Live like I would say every NBA player making that much money should be living like they make 250000 a year. Okay? For the rest of their lives. For the rest of their lives. Yes, that means used cars. <laughs> yes. Yes. You still get a new home. But you're not eating out every night. Unbelievable. Ray Williams, don't know who he is. Score 52 in 81 82, okay? When he retired in 87, he earned more than 2 million. Substantial amount at the time with multiple friends and family members relying on him for support. Williams blew through that money quickly. There goes the family members and friends thinking they got a goddamn meal ticket. And that you surround yourself around bad people, man, they'll bring your ship down. They'll bring your ship down to their level. And when he received his 200,000 pension from the NBA, he lost that sum on a real estate scam. Ha, oh, fuck. Real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. You see, you see Fresh and Fit switched up and said, do your resume. <laughs> real estate's not easy. It is the most scoundrel, scandalous business there is unregulated thieves everywhere from your contractor your architect it goes across the board there's a lot of bad people in this industry you have to have tough skin tough balls vet people and be tough nothing nice about real estate let's continue alan iverson 15 year career he earned close to 155 million but he also spent like he would never run out of cash right a former teammate told Sports Illustrated, Iris used to drop 30 to 40 stacks on strip clubs every time he went. Oh, my Lord. What the fuck? How many times did he go? <laughs> he also loved spending money on cars, jewelry, and traveling on private jets. He also dropped thousands of dollars at his favorite restaurant, TJ at Friday's. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. By 2013... He had defaulted on his $1.2 million mortgage. We sent his home in a foreclosure. Okay. On the bright side, his lifetime endorsement contract reblock ensured he'll see $32 million that's been put in a trust for him in 2030. Wow. That's crazy. That's crazy. All right. Eddie Curry. Out of high school, big beast, animal, animal. Loved that era of basketball, man. Really did. Okay. <sighs> Four pick of the draft. Overweight, out of shape. Did he play 11 years? Wow, I didn't know that. Um, agent was taking out loans in his name. Don't trust nobody, please, with, with that much money. Agent and Forge encouraged Sidney to buy electronics, cars, and vacations. He also took out loans. This is this is the this is what happens, all right? When you got that much money, everybody and their mother 
think that it is falling off of the fucking tree. Sorry for cussing. All right. And everyone's, they don't realize that everybody's doing the same thing, trying to get borrow money from your ass. They don't realize it takes about 15, 20 people and you can go fucking broke. So if those athletes are giving you an a attitude and saying, what's their problem? Why don't, we help, why don't you help us? He can't. He helps one. He has to help all of you. And then here you go. Look at Eddie Curry. All right. $500,000 loan with an 85% interest rate. He earned about $70 million over his career, but in between spending more than $1,000 on his cable bill, $6,000 on personal seven, $17,000 on taking care of his loved ones, he went through his fortune fairly quickly. Gone. 70 million. Remember taxes, guys. Remember taxes. Darius Smiles. Oh, I hate to see him on here. Earned 62 million with the Clippers. His career was sadly cut short by troubles on and off the court, including a devastating knee injury. Unfortunately, 62 million ran out with that with that within eight years of retiring. He explained to the Tribune in 2019. They left high school, straight out of high school. Straight out of high school. St. Louis. He reported to have lost more than a hundred thousand in a single bad real estate transaction in California. He fled. He fled, filed for bankruptcy in 2010, 2016. Had the auction off value of belongs to pay down his debts. All right. Uh, bankruptcy from sixty-two million. Real estate is not gold, guys. <laughs> if there's a lesson learned here, yeah, I'm in real estate. I'm in real estate. Hmm. What kind of real estate? What kind of real estate? All right. Steak, steak tastes too damn good. I had to eat it with you guys. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. God damn, I made this thing good. It's tender too. Oh, Lord. I taste it. Scotty Pippen. Yeah, I made this video for him. This is what happened to Larson. Once the money goes, the honey goes. And this is what happened. Scotty earned about 110. According to 2017 CNBC estimate, Pippen lost 27 million in bad investments. All right. He tried. I'll give him that. In 2002, he spent 4.3 million on a jet. Then he needed 1 million worth of repairs to be able to take off. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Sold a mansion, took a million dollar loss. Although he took some financial hits, he still has a net worth of roughly $50 million. He's even published a memoir and started a bourbon business. Yep, so why put Scotty up there then, man? Charles Barkley, you know he making money. 37 and a half over 16 years. He missed, he lost probably $1 million on 30 separate occasions. <laughs> so $30 million. One time report he lost more than two and a half million in just six hours. All right. Now he works for TNT, makes him one and a half. Here goes Rodman, the last guy, baby. Crazy, man. Even people who aren't basketball fans know that's Rodman. That's true. Tattoo Pierce. Yeah. He probably started to see tattoo. Even people who are popular popularize it. All right. He earned $27.5 million over his career. Rob was known for giving away cash and asked for it. Okay, couldn't have dueled out a good chunk of money to homeless people that year. All right. Professional athletes, you are an easy target because all you're going to do is nod your head. Okay, yeah, y'all got you, I got you. You don't know any better. You don't know how to say no. You don't know how to be low key. Sometimes, I'm saying it here, we talking, me, the only, only friend you have, stick your middle finger up and say, fuck them, man, you move on. I'm right? sorry. Sorry, you don't got it. All right, let's keep moving. According to so, so, uh, you don't have to be that rude, but what I'm trying to say, you need to have that attitude. You got to take care of yourself. According to Celebrity Network, he's now worth about 500K. Wow. Wow. Ron was also the victim of a predatory financial advisor who scanned him and other professional athletes out of millions of dollars. When they see an athlete and they look at you in the culture with your, with your, with your features, you're a target. And they're going to rape you blind. And that's why I'm screaming financial literacy. Your boy Mikey, we talking to me. Like, subscribe, shit, man. I went in today. A little lesson. Financial literacy is key. It's key. Let's get busy across the board, across races. Everybody out to get you. One way 
Oh, another. They're gonna find you. They're gonna get you, get you, get you.